This is why you want every single trial, including Trump's uh, New York trial, should have been and always should be televised. Oh, my God. Okay, today I'm going to share with you more drama in the Fulton County, Fannie Willis's district in the Young Thug trial. Watch as Ashley Merchant represents Brian Steele, who is the attorney who Judge uh, Suge Knight Glanville placed into custody in contempt because he wouldn't tell him who told him about a secret meeting he shouldn't be having. This is absolutely insane. Listen to this, and then I'm going to show you this awesome video. Stick around to the end. This awesome clip of Ashley Merchant absolutely schooling this judge on what uh, criminal contempt law is all about. Watch this. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Did the court order the transcript that we can see it and have a hearing and call witnesses? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna order the transcript as of yet because if the case should be reviewed, the appellate court will have that particular um, ability to do that. I don't believe at this point in time uh, it is the court's understanding of the ex parte conversation that. The disclosure is the more troublesome remedy. If I did something wrong, then certainly that can be reviewed. But I'm not in at this point in time going to release any of the transcript in terms of uh, the, what may be disclosed in, in, or that was said in uh, Chambers ex parte at this point. Well, I, I was told based upon information and belief that it would affect this witness's testimony in front of the jury because I was told based on information believed that depending upon how the day goes, he may go home or not, depending upon his testimony. I'd like to know what that's about. I don't I don't know, Mr. Steele. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean that's why I would like to know who it is that told you or disclosed this information from Chambers. Because I don't know if this person even had if those, if that conversation was even had within my presence or hearing, I, I don't. That's my, so I would like to have a hearing with the court as a witness, with the DAs as a witness, with the deputies as a witness, with Mr. Copeland as a witness, with his counsel as a witness, court reporter, transcript. And, and judge, I'm not trying to be harmful. I'm Mr. Steele, I, I think that you have... You're, you're running a very thin professional responsibility line. I don't think you have cover at this point in time. I think you're, 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 you're blowing your coverage at this point because I do think that somebody told you some things that were, that violate privilege. What privilege? Attorney client privilege. So, I mean, but, but that, but that's beside the point at this point in time. We're not going to argue about that right now. I just need the, the way you purge your contempt is that you just tell me who told you this? That's I'm not asking you what was said. I just but you're 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 indicating what was said. I want but I want to know who told it to you. And I'm making a based on information. But but I need to know who it is because that that's that's critical for the court taking remedial steps at this point in time. You're holding me in contempt. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm holding you in contempt because you won't tell me who. How could something I'm not trying to be obstruction, but how can something be attorney client privilege and happen before the court? Well, because if somebody's a represented party and they disclose the information that to you all as parties in this case, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. I, I don't. I, I mean, like I said, I don't know what was said to you. I don't. So, so I, this is. I'm trying to get out. Well, so, that's improper at this point in time. Why? Because because you are telling the court conversations that you are privy to. In my chambers, that I know you weren't present. But the court was present. That's what I'm trying to say. That doesn't make a difference. But you got information that you shouldn't have had, and, and then you can't. And then you turn around and you say, "Well, I did something. The court did something wrong, and that we should be entitled to have the the transcript." You all have contorted and perverted that particular process. It really, you really have. What I said was, it is a material um, part of trial. It's not it, well. I'd like to I no. I <laughs> it, it would be just like if you all in the past have had ex parte conversations with the court, and I won't say about for what you and Mr. Adams and others. That is your right, and that little period or that little conclave of of discussion with the court 
protects you and protects the system. It's recorded and taken down. So if the so if it needs to be reviewed later, it gets reviewed. But you have been you have um, you have made something out of it that I where I'm kind of at a disadvantage at this point in time. So because I didn't invite you into that particular proceeding, and I don't think you had a right to be there. Well, all I know is what I told you, and there's more. I, I, oh, oh, okay, well. There's a witness testifying who met with the court and the DAs. That doesn't concern us? Your Honor, mate. Meaning the, the defense? Okay, so this is just insane. I mean, the judge is saying basically that you need to tell me who told you. I want to know who tattletailed on me. And he, he's saying that the defense attorney, Brian Steele, had no right to be in a secret meeting where the pros Fannie Willis prosecutor, as well as one of the top star witnesses, Mr. Copeland, and the judge were in chambers with zero representation of defense. That is so absolutely absurd and wrong on all sorts of levels, legally, ethically, morally, everything. But anyway, bear with me because I'm um, I'm traveling right now, and so uh, let me let me fast forward here. This amazing clip of when Merchant actually shows up, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I have told your client, uh, uh, you represent Mr. Steele, is that correct? Yes. For the purposes of the contempt, I've, I've entered the order, I've entered the contempt already. I'm entering the order, I'm about to enter the order. I've held him in contempt earlier from today's proceeding by him not telling me who it is he got this information from. I'm not asking him for any of the sum and substance of the communication. He's been disclosing that, however, um, and that's why I kind of want to know who told him that. So if he tells me who it is that that tell that that disclosed that to him, he has he will be able to purge himself of that contempt and he's done. Um, that's the only thing I'm asking for at this point in time. He's, if not, then as you well know, as a criminal contempt, there's no supersedious bond, there's no appeal, and um, I'm going to put him in custody uh, for this evening. And if he if he wishes to, which which he can still purge if tonight Keith Adams emails me or you email me and tell me, well, it was X. So he can. I'm going to give him as much flexibility to purge himself of this contempt. Only thing I want is because of the way this information was disclosed. It is troubling to the court, and is very since, since it was a ex parte communication. Um, we won't get into the merits of everything else that uh, Mr. Steele has has proffered and everything else, but that's the only thing I'm trying to do at this point in time. So, um, I've asked your client for the last time if he would tell me who it is that that disclosed um, that information. Please. Um, microphone, it'll it'll pick up, madam. It'll turn green. Yeah, it'll turn green. Okay, yes. Watch this. Is it on now? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, judge, just for the record, is so is the criminal contempt is it criminal contempt that you held him in? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you said you had a hearing earlier today. I no, I with criminal contempt, I told him what the contempt was, and that was he refused to tell in you know, order of the court, if counsel, as you know, if the court orders you to do something and you don't, that's criminal contempt. So I've asked him several times, please just tell me who it is that told you. That I didn't ask or inquire about anything that was said. I just want to know who it was because he's got too much detail of this particular alleged conversation for, for the court to be concerned about it. So, And Judge, since it is a criminal contempt, he is entitled to due process. He's entitled to a hearing, entitled to an actual show cause, entitled to the mm. allegations actually written, entitled to a witness list. We're entitled to present our own witness list. And well, no, contempt, cr criminal contempt is different. It is on the spot. So he's gotten the due true. process he's going to get. That's on the spot. I told him. Plus, he's had all day to tell me who it is that is it so a little different miss merchant i'm going to disagree with you but well okay and judge just just for the record it's um that's direct so 
what you're holding him in is in direct criminal contempt. Yes. Um, the issue with the direct criminal contempt is whether or not to actually hold a hearing now, whether or not it needs to be held immediately. And the problem is, if you hold him in direct criminal contempt, as you're saying that you did, you are a witness to that proceeding. And so it has to be referred to another judge. Doesn't require recusal. You actually have to sue a sponte, send it to another judge because you are a witness to the proceeding. Show me the case law that says that, Ms. Yes, Merchant. It is Henry McClarty. It's 152 <laughs> Georgia App 399. And it says um, that that is one of the cases. Also, two other cases, Henry Adams, 215 Georgia App 372. Well, one second. Give me the name of the first case again. Henry what? Um, the, do you want just the number, Judge? Yeah, I would. Thank you. 215. 215. Georgia app. Georgia app. 372. Okay. Also 215. Georgia app. 349. Okay. That's Adams and Hasty. All right. Let me take a look at those. You have anything a little bit a little more current than 1994? Um, Hasty is 94. Unfortunately, contempt is, of attorneys is not a common proceeding. So That's most of the cases long. are a little bit older. And, and Judge, I'm not the only one here. Um, there's quite a few other lawyers that want to be present in the court. Um, there's about 20, 25. The challenge is I've got space, space allocations, as I told you. So you can, uh, like I said, since you are representing him, that's fine. Uh, he, he told us, Mr. Steele told us that. Anybody else, because I have security concerns as well, and we have to vet people to come in, then they can go to 8-H, and they can certainly watch the proceedings from there. Okay. And judge for security purposes, they're all attorneys. Um, they're all members of the bar. I can give you all their names. You still would have to be searched. You still would have to be subject to the court's protocols. And also, um, there's room in the jury box, and then there's room in the courtroom. So we would ask that they be allowed to. I don't want them in my jury box, okay? No. I understand. That. Contempt is directed. Trial court has the power after confording the contempt door to the opportunity to speak in his own behalf. Announce punishment summarily and without further notice or hearing. I already did that, Mr. Steele. He's already told me. I already gave him the opportunity to do that. So um, we had that conversation this morning already. So. Um, and Judge, it's so there's a couple different issues. First, the question is whether or not you need to have that hearing now. I know you're saying that you had the hearing earlier, but but regardless, he was entitled to have an attorney at that point and he didn't have one. So the question is initially whether or not you even need to hear this now. And some of the cases I've cited, along mm -hmm. with some others, say that a summary proceeding is not necessary in a case like this. And the best evidence of that is the trial has continued. It has not stopped this trial. So for you to hold a summary hearing of direct contempt, the court has to be able to state how this interferes with your ability to administer justice in this case. Oh, and um, I can tell you because it is a it is a violation of the, the sacrosanct nature of the court's ability to hold ex parte conversations without those being broadcast to other people. And as to how, as to, as to how that information was disclosed, that's a pro that's a real problem. That's why it's of such, you know, such an issue for the court at this point in time. Judge, and the, you know, Mr. Steele has a right to make a motion like this. If there he, were ex parte, he does. He does. He does. I'm, I'm, but, not, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. But you know, he he he. Um, but he's kind of put himself in in the particular position he's in. No, Judge, I don't agree. Uh, I, well, I believe I'm gonna, that I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I believe that the court has put him in that position. No, he cannot be held in the law states. McClarity, which I cited to you earlier, and it's true that direct summary contempt, which arises in the presence of the court, intends to scandalize it and or hinder, or obstruct the orderly, pres orderly process of the administration of justice. The preservation of order and decorum of the court is exempt from due process requirements of notice and hearing. And that's even Moody it goes back to 1974. So I, I believe that Mr. Steele's, he can file whatever motions, but his particular actions in this case, I just want to know who told him this. That's all. I'm not asking him this, to, to release or, or otherwise tell, tell any conversations, but I just want him to tell me that. And judge, so that's what you want, but that does not conflate to a contempt. Your desire for him to answer your question does not mean that you have the power to hold him in so contempt. So you can come in the court, Ms. Merton, and not answer a question of the court and not be found held in contempt? If it's a question that the court is not permitted to ask, yes. Okay, well, this in, 
This is a question the court's permitted to ask. And it's our position. If we had a hearing, we could explain to the court why he is not required. First of all, the court accused him of eavesdropping. That is a crime. He has a Fifth Amendment privilege against answering those questions. Rule 1.6 protects all confidential information that is gained not from your client, but in representation, representation of your client. He has the ability to protect that information. But we don't even need to get there because... He can't be held in contempt, and you can't threaten him with contempt for presenting a motion in good faith. He presented a motion in good faith that he believed there were ex parte communications. You are a witness to that because it's my understanding that you were part of those ex parte communications. They can't be ex parte if you aren't part of them it, by nature. Okay. Okay. So this is this is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I, I, I've said this many, many times. That I, and by the way, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Who do you agree with? Do you agree with uh, Judge Glanville? Do you agree with Ashley Merchant? Who, by the way, the context of this, she was literally on her way home from her office. She's part of the Georgia Bar Association of Criminal Defense Attorneys. She's the president. Uh, and she also helps attorneys in Georgia when they're held in contempt. And she's got a, they, she calls them strike force, which is really cool. You know, I think the GOAT is Steve Sadow. Sadow is the absolute pit bull and the goat. But I tell you what, she schooled him. She schooled the judge on what the actual law is. And he keeps repeating over and over again. You know, we call this in when you have an empty argument, when you have a non an invalid argument, uh, this is referred in psychological terms as well as in legal terms that you just kind of repeat yourself over and over again. He keeps saying, I just want to know who it is. I just want to know who it is. Like almost like it's very kind of scary, like almost like a toddler saying, no, no, no. I want to know. I don't care about the law. I don't care about what's going on. He is a grown man. He is a judge of a superior court in Fulton County in a major, major criminal case. And he's being schooled by Ashley Merchant. And actually, I like this judge. I, I think this judge is kind of a lovable teddy bear. He's He seems like just at times... He gives a lot of latitude and a lot of leniency, especially to Fannie Willis's prosecution team, Miss Love, who acts a fool time and time again. Um, but I, I think he's fair for the most part. But in this case, he gets absolutely proven unequivocally wrong by a real attorney, somebody who actually uses evidence. Again, rhetorical principles of, of, of Aristotle, ethos, credibility, backing it up with substance, evidence, case studies and showing emphatically you are wrong in this case judge and uh the judge just wouldn't back down so i want to hear from you guys my god this trial has got me i can't even sleep i can't even go a minute without something new happening stay tuned make sure you follow make sure you subscribe if you really want to always be in the know our free newsletter is in the comments down below in the pinned comment show notes and description all you gotta do is click on the link Click on a free newsletter and you're in. You'll never miss out on all the live breaking, up to date, uh, drama for your mama news and current events right to your inbox so you don't miss anything. Make sure you click on that. But tap that thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And make sure you check out these videos coming up right now. And as always, God bless you and may God bless America. I'll see you very soon.